Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Hope everyone had a great holiday break, and welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Let's hop right into all of today's stories, and as always, all of today's stories will be timestamped in the description if you guys want to bounce around to whatever story you want to hear about. The first of which, though, is Dan M is back. Now, if you guys have been around the CSGO scene for quite some time, Dan M is kind of notorious for releasing cheating videos on pro players that he finds or thinks to be cheating. He actually came back after a six-month break, though, with a very interesting video. So I'll link the full video down below for all of you guys, where he does talk about, of course, cheaters coming back to big LAN events in side of esports as well as CSGO, but a very, you know, informational video, guys, and I'll also link down below the DEF CON video. If you guys are not aware of what DEF CON is, it's an annual hackers and cheaters conference for esports, and it's been growing in the scene ever since the last few years, and especially as of right now, when more pro players and all these expanding esports are trying to actually cheat on big LAN events or in big LAN events, and of course, it's going to come down, it comes down to, is it worth cheating for? Is Are these large amounts of money, of course, going to draw in more cheaters? And it was a great informational video, guys, and again, I'll play you a short clip of what DEF CON talks about in their annual meetings and it's kind of crazy to see that we could have a lot of pro players in esports as well as CSGO that cheat that we never even knew about. Computers at these events typically close a lot of kind of obvious attack vectors. Uh, you have internet access restricted so you can't go to csgocheats.com and download some EXEs. So I decided to hack with a mouse. Uh, why? I found a mouse with what I considered to be an overpowered microcontroller. Uh, and then I found out more recently that a whole bunch of different mice from a wide variety of manufacturers are using the same family of microcontrollers that has a whole, you know, bunch of extra capabilities that they're not really needing. And I, you know, anecdotally, I think there's not really enough scrutiny over devices at these esports tournaments, just from what I've observed. And to segue from the cheating aspect to a big story, I want to talk about Drake Lounge and the reason why I don't want you guys to use Drake Lounge. I talked about this in the past. Of course, they are one of the biggest gambling chains out there. They're owned by Drake Moon as well as they have Drake Wing and, and Drake Lounge. Who knows what other websites they own? I've told you guys in the past to maybe not be uh, using Drake Lounge. A bit skeptical about how how slow their system might be sometimes. And this is another reason though why you guys should not use Drake Lounge. Again, I. Did reach out to them. I'll show you guys their response sometime soon. This revolving around this past weekend, we had a loot dot bet. It was a holiday cup they had going on, a tournament with a few teams. This actual matchup, though, was between a, a team known as Codewise versus Aspada. It was a semifinals of this tournament, guys. And the Codewise players, first of all, they refused to actually record their matches or their VODs for the match, which is kind of a telltale sign for a team who's cheating. But besides that, the team Codewise was actually winning the match. They went on to win the match by a dominant performance. They were not DQ'd, though, or disqualified from the Holiday Cup until after their match and actually during the finals they were partaking in and actually Drake Lounge decided to pay out the bettors who had bet on Codewise anyway to win. So to kind of further explain that, if you are on Drake Lounge betting on this game, Codewise versus Espada, and you bet on Codewise, they did win the match but they did so by cheating you're going to be paid out no matter what. And Drake Lounge decided to pay out those people who had actually bet on the cheating team no matter what. They didn't give out refunds to the people who actually bet on, on Espada to win the game. Even though Codewise was DQ'd and Espada was put into the finals afterwards, Drake Lounge decided to say this to all their all their people on their websites. Yes, we're sorry about that, guys. We're sorry that some people may have bet on the cheaters. We're sorry that someone actually might have you know been influenced by this and actually known they were cheating. But don't worry, guys. We're going to pay out the people who bet on the cheating team. Now, as well, we actually had Drake Lounge. I reached out to them via Twitter. They gave me this response on screen. No official statement was released about the situation during the match, only after it. Therefore, according to our FAQ in terms of service, since the match was over, it was drafted and paid out based on the results of the match, and nothing will be changed regarding it. Blah, blah, blah. We apologize for the inconvenience. And it just kind of blows my mind that, uh, you know, any kind of betting website out there has this in their FAQ. Of course, people aren't going to go and check the minor, minor details of the FAQ that says if a team is cheating and they win the match and the match is finalized before they're caught to be cheating, which by the way, a majority of cheating teams are not only caught, they're not caught during the match, they're caught afterwards when their VODs are actually looked over or the fact that they're accused of cheating. So most of the time when you're when actually caught cheating, I mean, it's such a rarity to get caught during the match or kicked during the match and actually found out while the match is being played out. So that's why I kind of am worried about this. On top of that, though, there's so many people out there. We could say tens of people, hundreds of people, maybe thousands. We're not really sure the dollar amount as well. Uh, I, also, I had a friend of mine, though, who reached out to me and said he had a multi-bet going on on screen for all of you. It was a multi-bet. He correctly guessed Spirit versus a, a Vanguard. Spirit did beat them. But the second part of the bet you guys saw there, he actually chose Espada uh, to beat this uh, Codewise Gaming. And, of course, they actually paid out Codewise, and that's why he lost that bet. So it's pretty astonishing to see a 
a company and a website like this that makes millions of dollars a year. It's no, more, it's no longer a secret. This chain of websites makes millions and millions of dollars and they might have lost maybe let's say $10,000, $20,000 just to pay out everyone for this and again you could have easily refunded these smaller bets or any of the bets. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there's not many people who bet a ton of money on this Aspada team versus CodeWise. It's just a very, very unfortunate business tactic there that worked out in the wrong way guys. So I would advise not using Drake Lounge. Very skeptical of them right now. The fact that they allow cheaters to win and to pay out people who actually place bets on cheaters who easily could have known that team was cheating and the, and the actual result would be finalized before they were caught, which is again what happens in most cases. Now bouncing off that as well though, we do have some big news out there guys revolving around Mo TV. I guess we're talking about gambling. Now we're going to go to crypto mode though. Of course taking over his YouTube channel. He's kind of trying to transition from a gambling uh, YouTuber to also a cryptocurrency channel as well. I'm going to link the, uh, the actual separate channel down below for all of you guys who want some cryptocurrency advice. I'll preface this by saying that Mo is a very wealthy man. I'm sure he's made a lot of money off cryptocurrency and I'm sure he has some pretty decent advice for all of you guys who are trying to get involved. I will say this as though as well. Please, please be careful guys. No matter who you're trying to invest with, no matter what advice you seek from what people out there, it's a very risky market no matter what you're doing in cryptocurrencies. I do want to talk about though one of his latest advertisements for a website, an ICO or an IPO, initial public offering known as Naga Coin. Now he made a video about this about a week ago. It was right here on screen and in the comment section there were very few people out there that accused him but you guys can see the dislike bar. A few people thought that Naga Coin and their their IPO website was actually a, a Bitcoin miner. It would act if you guys went to the website, it would install or you know launch a Bitcoin miner onto your PC. A few people reported a high or a heavy CPU usage when, once they went on the website itself. Although this was never proven. Now I will state as well though, guys, it was kind of you know a little bit iffy because Mo's response to this guy, he actually did not show proof that the company told him that they weren't uh, installing Bitcoin miners on people's computers. And of course, once a company does this, they can actually abuse this and, and it can control how much. Uh, CPU usage is actually put on your computer so maybe they were watching the video maybe they saw people complaining and maybe they turned that whole thing off so we're never gonna know the whole the whole true story guys I think Mo's current argument the main argument he has is this actually was an IPO company they raised hundreds of millions of dollars for their IPO so of course they're not gonna try and install Bitcoin miners although my, my response to that is we've had several corrupt companies out there who have done things terribly wrong that even though they had lots of money they still did things that were definitely against the law and immoral so I think that argument is a bit a bit tough I think both sides though have yet to prove anything so uh, to, to go with it for now guys I can't really prove anything about Naga coin being a scam I will though suggest you guys be very careful in the cryptocurrency market it's kind of a shame though both sides of this really did not prove their argument and uh, we had some I guess just some iffy statements done by Mo during the video uh, which I'll play here for all of you I want to I want to make something clear it says here United States um, residents are not allowed to participate in the ICO I personally will not be participating anymore because of this. Um, because first off, I'm not gonna publicly say I'm gonna be participate. You know what I'm saying? The Nega Wallet centralizes oh, yeah. crypto power. Oh, yeah, that's what I want. Like nothing that has ever existed One wallet. before, and it One also dream. opens up the financial markets to two billion unbanked people. Same. Cryptocurrencies to pay for anything, anywhere in the world at the best exchange rate available. From a cocktail at the beach in Rio. Wow. I, I'm actually. To in London, I'm gonna get this. I don't care, dude. I'm gonna get. For your favorite I'm gonna somehow get coins, and I'm gonna. Lastly, I'll end that story by saying I know it's not really CS:GO related, but again, Mo has, of course, uh, kind of a financial gain, a financial bias to actually, of course, make those videos. Uh, although, if you guys did invest in Naga Coin, you would have made a small amount of money. So uh, he might know what he's saying, guys. But again, be careful. He does have more of a financial backing. Of course, he's being paid to make those videos. So just be careful. He has an incentive to make those videos, and to actually. Uh, try and preach these coins. I'm not really sure his background in cryptocurrencies, but it seems it's not hard to make money. So it's not hard to sound official right now in the cryptocurrency market. I have a few uh, very, very small amount of money in cryptocurrencies. I've made a lot of money. So it's not hard to make money right now. It's not hard to sound professional. Just be careful. And back to more important news, our last two stories were CSGO news, guys. We do have our end of the year 2017 top five teams for all of you via HLTV rankings. I'll briefly talk on this and I want you guys to comment down below what team was your favorite team to watch this year. I myself have to say FaZe Clan, the way they ended the year and of course having that new roster only a few months ago have been amazing to watch especially ever since their performances at ESL New York and so on and so forth how they didn't lose a map for two tournaments straight it was just insane to see so we do have our final rankings here guys of course in order from one to five we have SK, FaZe, Astralis followed by NIP and Cloud9 and I want you guys to know that the fall off between one and two and the rest of the, of the entire rankings is immense so of course I have to look at my list here guys because one and two FaZe and SK have won or SK and FaZe uh, coincidentally have won so many 
many events. I can't really memorize those for all of you. We had SK though. I believe they won. I think it was five events. We had IEM Sydney, ECS Season 3, ESL Cologne, Epicenter, and EPL Season 6. FaZe Clan, I think they won four events. We have uh, Starlight Season 3 a while ago. ESL New York, they dominated. E-League Premier, they dominated. And of course, ECS Season 4 most recently. On top of that, Astralis won a couple events. This was actually very, very early in 2017. So I think this is where their late ranking does come from. Them being a very consistent team. And of course, they had a strong start to the year. That was actually at E-League Atlanta, the, the previous E-League major, not the one coming up, as well as IEM Masters. And on top of that, no, number four, NIP. They, of course, won IEM Oakland. They had the NIP Magic versus FaZe Clan. So it just goes to show you how good FaZe Clan was when it came to top two finishes. They also made the finals at IEM Oakland, but lost to NIP. And besides that, guys, in our top five, we also have Cloud9. Although I kind of very skeptical, it kind of goes to show you guys how, how tough these rankings are and how weak the top five are towards the very, very bottom of it and how every team but probably beyond your top three can go anywhere because Cloud9 did not win a single $250,000 plus event. And uh, yeah, besides that, not really too big of a thing outside North America. And I don't mean to bash North American teams here, guys. It just say, it just goes to show you for 2017, the year of SK and FaZe, no other teams really saw much success. I think as of right now, I counted it correctly throughout the entire year of 2017. Besides SK and FaZe, we only had seven other teams actually win a $250,000 plus tournament. So it was kind of crazy to see and Cloud9 was not one of them. So a uh, great end of the year and I cannot wait for the E-League Major guys. A lot going on and again, I do have a market video plan for all of you who are trying to invest in the next major, but again, be very careful. The market could do anything. It could collapse. It could soar. We're going to see what happens though. And very last thing, kind of in some old news for all you godsend fans out there, of course, throughout 2017, I know late 2016, we saw a little bit, a bit of a surge with the Swedish shuffle between godsend and Fnatic. Ever since though, though the godsend roster kind of abandoned. I know they have a full team over there, but definitely struggled throughout most of this year, guys. They have finalized their 2018 roster though, and they have now certified themselves one of the younger rosters out there in the European scene. The average age just over 20 years old as they have they have actually added Hampus. That's a former Fnatic stand-in and of course Brawlin. Why I'm talking about Brawlin though is of course he's actually one of the younger players in European pro history. He's just 15 years of age. He does bring that age of the team down significantly guys but that's be your new God sent roster on screen for all of you and I'm very very keen to look at Brawlin in the, in the year of 2018 and see how he matures in the scene. I love watching 15 year old kid that total I didn't. I love watching younger pro players progress in the scene is what I meant to say but anyway I hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. I will see you guys all tomorrow or sometime soon with some more news out there. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like or more importantly, leave a comment down below and I'll see you all next time, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Remember, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you and uh, okay, goodbye.